Good day, good day. I want to make this video response for my buddy David. David, I got your message. Uh, you ask me about Cantonese characters. Let me read your message first. Okay, I've got a question regarding Cantonese characters. I think there are quite some differences between written Cantonese and Mandarin, especially when it comes to colloquial Cantonese. I've read that Mandarin sentence, sentence structures spoke, uh, spoken out loud in Cantonese will sometimes make your Cantonese sound weird. So for me, it's clear that I want to learn Chinese characters which are only used for Cantonese as well. My question is, do you know good learning resources uh, or did you just learn from context, which means textbooks such as Teach Yourself? I mean, for Hanzi, there are things like James Heisig's books, etc. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Okay, um, this is a really good question. Um, a lot of people have been um, raising this question lately about the, um, the Cantonese characters in Mandarin. Now, you do have some Cantonese characters that are used that you won't see in Mandarin. Um, I don't know where you read that. Well, I guess it will sound weird, but a lot of the times, like particularly music, when you um, sometimes they they what they do is um, the Cantonese music they will use actual Mandarin characters and sound them out when they're singing songs. So they actually have two different ways of speaking Mandarin. When you um, like, if you watch the tele the, sh the television shows, the news, or whatever. You will see that they use um, they use a lot of Mandarin words too. Um, colloquial Cantonese can be a bit different, but here are my suggestions. Um, these are the books that I'm using for Cantonese now. Now I do for my Cantonese characters. I just I mainly use these books here um, because that's they're all Cantonese. Now I do watch a lot of the um, the news on YouTube, but like I said. A lot of that stuff is just it's all Mandarin characters. Uh, like on Old Cake, Old Cake's channel, they have the actual subtitles, but they're they're Mandarin. Just they just use the uh, pronunciation for the, um, the Cantonese pronunciation, and there's some characters that you won't see. So, um, first book here is this Cantonese phrase book. Everything here is in Cantonese, okay? As far as the characters. Now, as you know, this all traditional. Hong Kong, they use traditional characters. Let me get this clear, clear for you. Let's see here, too close. Uh, what's going on? Okay, that is strange. Okay, I hope that. All right, so as you can see here, um, everything is in traditional characters. There are some characters here. That you will see aren't used in manner like this Thai character, Thai Hei, Thai Hei to see uh, to go um to to the see the cinema, Thai Hei. This character you won't see. They use a different character in manner for C. Okay, so I would recommend getting this this phrase book here because you will find a lot of the Cantonese characters. So that's Lonely Planet Cantonese phrase book. Wedding Bells, my most used right now, most used resource. This is very good. You have your Cantonese, all Cantonese characters. Let me show you something here. Like this is uh, the second reading. As you can see, let's see. I don't know why the focus is, okay. So everything here is written in Cantonese. Now again, it's traditional characters and a lot of Mandarin speakers will be able to read half of this stuff. There are just some characters that aren't used in in Mandarin. They're using you know can't using Cantonese. Okay. Like Ko, this is this isn't used in Mandarin. Hai isn't used in Mandarin. And then uh, Ga Gala that that isn't used in Mandarin. Well, the lot is in Mandarin, but the way it's used here, Ga, you won't see that. Aya, that's used in um, Mandarin. So it's a bit mixed up, but the pronunciation is totally different. Now, if I flip back to the back of the book, let me flip back here, show you something interesting. They have the actual Mandarin back here, but it doesn't come with audio, unfortunately. I wish it did. This is the Mandarin translation, the characters. See that? 
So that's the translation in Mandarin. You see how they word it differently? Different characters this time. Some of them are similar though. So yep, I will recommend if you if you plan on learning Cantonese, you want to you know we want to learn the characters swiftly. I would recommend getting a course like this with the context and just copy them out because that's how I'm learning. I learn all of my characters just through context. Now I'm not down in the Heisig method. It's it's you know because the different methods work for different people. I don't I don't like to learn characters individually. I like to have a context. Now I started with Teach Yourself. I completed this whole book and I went through it by just as I explained, you know, copying out copying down the dialogue, spending time on it, reading it over and over. So anything with a context like this will help you. It's really good. It just takes it's a lot of writing, it takes time, but hey. If you're learning Chinese, if you decide to learn Chinese, then you you know that it's going to be it's, it's going to take some time. And then I have this here. This is um, learning Cantonese through stories. I don't use this much lately because I'm so stuck to wedding bells. But I started with this. This is very good too because again they have all the Cantonese characters. You have your good audio with it. Then they give you the Yale system, the Romanized, to look at. So learning Cantonese through stories is another highly recommended resource for Cantonese. And intermediate, this this one here, intermediate Cantonese themes for listening, themes for listening and speaking. Again, this is just like this is just like the other book. It has a context. Well. Yeah, it does, but it, um, it mainly audio. But when you go to the back of the book to get the actual text, it's written out in um, Yale system Romanized. So you may what you may have to do is type if you if you know how to type in Cantonese, you may have to just translate it by typing it in Word or something like that. So you don't have to get this book. If you go ahead and get something like Teach Yourself, I'll recommend getting Teach Yourself first. You get Teach Yourself. And then work your way to wedding bells. You should be good because um, see, uh, complete teach yourself teach yourself Cantonese is like starting from beginners. So you can start with that. By the time you get to the end of that book, you'll be working your way to like intermediate, and you can get this. This is from intermediate to advanced, like just learning through readings. That's what I did. I got this book first, and then I went on ahead and got this wedding bells. So. I'm sure there are some other resources out there, but if you start with these two, you should be good. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. So that's what I use to learn the characters. And again, the Heisig's books, the Heisig's books, they are good, but it's just not a method that I, 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 I don't follow that method. It doesn't work for me because I like to have the stuff in context. I, I found that I learn more when it's in context. You know, instead of just saying, OK, I'm going to learn 10 characters this week and then 10 next week, I, I have to have a context. So that's it. If you have any other questions for me, David, let me know and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for viewing.